Hello, this is Jason Matthews. I am a retired law enforcement officer, and today I'm going to be answering the question, should police wear body cameras? And I think you're going to be very surprised by my answer, and I'm going to give you my answer here at the beginning in just a minute, and then I'm going to explain myself in detail. And this is a very timely topic, especially now, because really in the history of policing, Body cameras are fairly new, and especially what's very new is the release of body camera footage to the public, and even now, some departments and agencies are releasing body camera footage preemptively to the public before it's even requested. But before we get started, if you support the police, click the like button, and if you do not support the police, click the dislike button. It's anonymous, and I'm just curious of where you stand I see a lot of divisiveness out there in YouTube videos and social media, so I just want to see you, the viewer, where do you stand on this issue? Let your voice be heard. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As I said, this is a very timely issue, and I'm going to give you my answer to the question right now. Should the police wear body cameras? And the answer that I have based on my many, many years and decades of experience is no. The police should not be wearing body cameras. I'm going to explain myself now, and I'm going to explain myself by giving you the positives and negatives, and we'll see if the positives outweigh the negatives or vice versa and how I came to my conclusion. And feel free to comment below. What do you think? Do you think that the police should be wearing body cameras? Here's some of the positives of body cameras. Number one, it could be used as evidence in a case. So if a body camera is on, It's capturing video and audio, and so if a crime is committed or someone is, for example, doing something on camera or saying something on camera that is incriminating, then that possibly could be captured in that body camera footage. For example, during a search, if one officer is behind another officer that is searching a suspect and that search reveals some contraband or the individual might try to drop some contraband, then that may be caught on a body camera and be used as evidence. Also, if, for example, someone is arrested and they are making admissions or making statements that may be incriminating, that could be positive for the police and that could be used in a court of law against that suspect. Another positive body cameras is that Let's say that someone, a suspect, makes an allegation against police and then the body camera reveals the opposite and it exonerates the officer. That's another possibility. Another possible positive is when a body camera is on, generally speaking, compels most police to behave if they otherwise would not behave. In other words, there's a certain amount of corrupt police officers out there or officers who would be speaking poorly to members of the public, whereas if a body camera's on and they know that body camera's on, they're probably going to be more civil and probably be more likely to follow the law and follow policy. Another possible positive would be in a use of force situation. If that body camera captures a use of force by a law enforcement officer on a suspect and it's questionable whether it is justified or not. Possibly that evidence will exonerate the officer. So if the use of force is caught on that body camera and the footage is reviewed, then that use of force could be deemed as justified. On the other hand, a positive could be if there is a corrupt law enforcement officer and something that that officer is doing on body camera is blatantly against the law, a use of force that is against law or against policy, then that officer could be held accountable, which is a positive thing. Now let's go into the negatives of body cameras. One negative is this can make police hesitate in their actions. Police now know that they are more than likely most departments and most agencies by this time either have body cameras or are going to get body cameras. In that case, if police know that they are on a body camera, at least the audio, and their actions are being recorded in a interaction with the public, 
whether it be a low-level interaction or a higher-level interaction such as the use of force, that officer might hesitate in what they should actually do or what they're legally allowed to do. So, for example, if they're in an interaction with someone who really needs to be forcefully dealt with, like a hardened criminal, that officer might hesitate knowing that they're on body camera because that body camera footage could possibly be reviewed and possibly could get out into the public domain. I had this in my career at some point. Even though I'm doing everything right, even though I am following law and following policy, there could be a doubt in my mind and I could be hesitating on dealing with someone in a certain certain circumstance and I might go softer on them as to not put myself in a perceived bad light, perceived bad light. When you're dealing with someone of the public and they're not in cooperation with what you are legally allowed to do with them based on those circumstances, that's not a good thing. Some people need to be dealt with harshly. And if you're on body camera and you're worried about how that might look, even though you're not doing anything wrong, some people need to be dealt with in a very harsh and matter-of-fact manner. Negative about body cameras is that is a very static view of the body camera. It's not capturing everything that's happening on the scene. Not only is it not capturing what happened before the camera got turned on, but it's also not captured what happened after the camera was turned off. And it's a static view. It's only pointing in one direction. I saw a video many years ago, and I can't remember. I couldn't find it on YouTube. But one view of the body camera, if you were only to see one view, if one view was released, if one view got out there in the public, there was someone, I believe it was someone had robbed a 7-Eleven or something. But nothing was given about the details of the incident in the video. So all you saw was someone walking in the parking lot outside of a 7-Eleven, I believe. You had a side view of the individual walking. And all of a sudden, the individual was taking gunfire. And they shot the individual. From the, the police did from another angle. It didn't look like he was any threat. And if the public were to see that, there would be public outrage without any context not seeing another angle, but then there's another angle that is shown in another video. And the other angle is from the point of view of the officer that shot the individual. And from that view, you can clearly see the other hand on the other side of the individual. In his hand, in his hand, he has a firearm. And I believe he was yelling, I'm going to kill you or something. He was making threats. If only a partial view is released, that's very misleading. And this can be in deadly force situation. This can cause public outcry. And that's very dangerous for the public perception of the police, even though the police are doing the right thing. The public doesn't know about Graham versus Connor, the landmark case that governs use of force. One percent of the public knows that. They're not judging this based on case law. They're judging this based on just what they're seeing in a video out of context and not knowing all the facts. So let's give an example here in a use of force situation, a deadly use of force situation. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head here that there's a 911 call to a house and the caller is saying that there's an individual in their house, he has a shotgun and he's pointing it at their family, a family in the house. The police ri arrive on scene and the, they see an individual with the shotgun, pointing it at the family. The individual shoots someone in the head, drops the gun, somehow runs out the back door, maybe being shot at, maybe not, and they pursue him. He runs out the back door, he's unarmed, all you see is him running away on the body camera, and they shoot him in the back. Now, let's say that people who do not support the police, they get a hold of this video, that's released, either they ask for the release of the video and then they edit the video. They edit that video and all you see is someone running out the back door and police are shooting at him and he's unarmed. They shoot him, they kill him. How is that going to look if that's released on YouTube? 
without any context, without anything. Or let's say that something happened with the, with the body camera, that only it captured that portion of the video, or the body camera wasn't turned on for some reason. It happens. That's going to be seen very poorly by the public, and there will be public outrage. And can you shoot someone in the back if they're unarmed? Most of the public would say, no, you cannot. And most of the time, that's the case. But there are circumstances where, yes, you can shoot someone in the back if you're a law enforcement officer, and they're unarmed. So in that circumstance, that person is a known criminal who just cr c committed a violent act and is fleeing. He's a fleeing felon who just committed a violent act. He just shot somebody in the head. Can the police shoot him in the back even though he has dropped the firearm? I will say yes. Now, a court of law has to determine that. But I would say, as a use of force instructor when I was in law enforcement, I would say yes, they are justified. And there's other circumstances. For example, if someone, when they're being contacted, let's give another example here. If someone is being contacted and let's say there's a pursuit, they're pursuing someone who has a firearm. Let's say during that chase, a firearm falls out of that person's pocket. They continue running, they capture the individual, they restrain the individual, or they attempt to do uh, restrain the individual, but somehow that individual is able to escape, and he is running away. He's running away unarmed. He no longer has that weapon in his pants. Can they shoot that individual in the back running away? Well, it depends on the circumstances, because everything is situationally dependent. Every case is different. If he was running back towards that firearm to pick it up, then I will say yes. That would be justification to shoot the individual who's going towards a firearm probably to pick it up and turn around and shoot the police. You do not have to wait until someone actually has a firearm in their hand and is pointing it at the police. And then there's other circumstances. But as I said, every case is different. Every circumstance is different. Would you normally be able to shoot someone in the back? No, not normally, except in some rare circumstances. It is possible. And the public generally doesn't know that. So you see how body camera footage could get out there that can either be manipulated or prejudged and prejudged negatively, and the police take the brunt of it, even though they did everything right. And another negative would be, let's give another similar example. Let's say that a police officer is on the street, an individual walks up to him. Now, normally the police do not need to turn on their body cameras unless they think that there's something could possibly happen, that it's necessary to turn on the body camera. I can't speak for all jurisdictions. There could be policies in, in different jurisdictions that require you to turn on a body cam camera every time you talk to someone. But I highly doubt that's the case. So, for example, if someone walks up to a police officer and they're just talking to them, the police officer would have no reason to think he needs to turn on that body camera. The citizen gets upset for whatever reason, because citizens get upset, in my experience, for random reasons. They just don't like the police or they feel persecuted or whatever the case may be, because sometimes people just want to vent. They have a bad day. They're upset, whatever. And we'll say in this circumstance, an individual slaps the crap out of an officer right in the face. The body camera's not on. He slapped the officer out of nowhere. The officer was not expecting that. Let's say he turns on the body camera because he knows he has to do a use of force on this person now, and he goes to town on this person, and he does a use of force. The officer does a takedown on the individual, a forceful takedown, and slams him to the ground, gets his hands behind his back, and restrains him. The individual is calm. The individual at that point calms down. He knows he's restrained. He can't go anywhere. He can't do anything. He calms down. The officer gets him up, takes him to the patrol vehicle, puts him in the patrol vehicle. Incident seems like it's over. He turns off the body camera. It's normal because he's just going to transport the individual to the police station. Sometimes these vehicles have cameras inside that's recording everything. Sometimes they don't. I'm saying most times they don't. Whenever I have my body camera on, if the incident was over, I would turn it off because I'm driving for and nothing's happening. I'm in the front and the individual's in the cage in the back. Then let's say during the drive that the individual is going to jail, he starts getting agitated and he starts ranting and ranting about what just happened. 
or whatever random things he's saying. The officer is driving. He's not thinking about turning on that body camera because the guy's just ranting. It happens all the time. So what got captured on that body camera as far as the suspect was concerned? It sure looks like the suspect was taken advantage of. It sure looks like that officer ha was not justified to take down that individual. We'll say in this example, the individual at the beginning of the incident just stepped back and slapped the officer, and that was his only intent to make the officer look foolish. He just slaps the officer and steps back. So what was captured on the body camera was the use of force by the officer, which looked like it was done on an innocent person, taken down to the ground, and then transported and taken and put in a cage of a vehicle, then the camera was turned off. So the public doesn't see the slap in the face to the officer, the battery to the officer. Public also doesn't hear the ranting that's taking place on the drive back to jail. How does that look to the public if it's just released what was cap captured on the body camera? Another problem is many of these police, this is somewhat of a recent phenomenon in the last few years, and that is departments and agencies are re preemptively releasing body camera footage and investigation. They don't even know, the police department doesn't even know all the facts of the case, and they're releasing body camera footage. The incident needs to be investigated so they can compile all the facts of what happens first, in my opinion, before they can release body camera footage. But they're releasing it because the public is demanding it. And if you don't have all the facts, if it hasn't been investigated, and you just release body camera footage, how do you think the public is going to judge that? It could be completely justified in every way. For example, in a use of force situation, Graham versus Connor could be completely justified. It's released to the public and the public can scrutinize that. Even if some limited facts are released, a very short narrative, for example, in a YouTube video down in the description box, that doesn't tell the whole story. And how many viewers actually look in the description box of a video and read? I'm going to say the vast majority of people just want to watch videos. And in many cases, just for entertainment, they want to hate on the police. And they're looking for anything to justify their own position. And as I said, the body camera does not capture everything. Things could be happening behind the officer that you cannot see. There could be additional information that is completely being left out. The public in general, in my perception, when someone watches a YouTube video of a body camera, they believe that they're getting the whole story. And they can judge it based on that little clip the whole clip, even if it's 20 minutes. Yet, even though it's a 20 minute long clip, that officer still has to go back, document that in a report of what happened before they even made the stop. What did they see? Why did they make the stop? And then afterwards, if something happened and if something was happening off to the side that they saw of the incident that the body camera did not catch or audio that the body camera did not catch. And in a use of force situation, Officers potentially could hesitate, even if they're completely justified in a use of force situation. They know they're on body camera. They know this could be released. They know this could be scrutinized. And I mentioned this before earlier in the video interactions, but we're talking use of force now. If I'm as a police officer justified in Graham versus Connor using force on someone, I hesitate. That could cost my life and it could cost the life of members of the public. And I guarantee you, this has happened to me. I had the thought in my head, maybe I could lose my job over this. Not that I'm doing anything wrong. How could this be perceived incorrectly? A trained use, and force, use of force instructor like I was. The public doesn't know Graham versus Connor. The public doesn't know what's justified under the law and policy and does and doesn't. Now, I did not hesitate in those circumstances, but the thought was in my mind. And I can see other officers potentially hesitating. And I've seen some videos on YouTube of officers hesitating, whether it was due to the body camera or not, questionable, but it's possible. Should police wear body cameras as a retired law enforcement officer, having used body cameras before I retired for several years, there's too many downsides to body cameras. And I've laid them out here in this video. Are body cameras going away? Absolutely not. They're here to stay. They're just going to be have to be dealt with. And it's going to be really tough. It's getting tougher and tougher to be in law enforcement these days. If I was a new recruit, I probably wouldn't want to be in law enforcement these days. There's too much public scrutiny, even if things are done correctly. People are going to jail, in my opinion, and losing their jobs 
for doing things that were completely justified, in my opinion. There are people going to jail and losing their jobs for completely justified things, but also things that are justified also. It depends on the judge. It depends on the jury. It depends on biases. It depends on a lot of factors. Graham versus Connor is case law of the land, the ultimate case law of use of force. Yet judges can rule, juries can rule within a wide guideline. They have a lot of leeway. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Should police wear body cameras and give me your reasoning? If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.